Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat here on STV. The main talking points tonight, Aberdeen blow the chance to go joint top of the Scottish Premiership. Scott Brown says Champions League football is vital for Celtic and it's a big night of Scottish Cup action. Two replays of note to talk about. Which team will have the bragging rights in the capital city? Well, Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I couldn't think of a better man to be our guest on such a night than a man who's played for Hibs and Hearts with distinction. Darren Jackson is our bookroom guest. We'll get to Hibs and Hearts <coughs> in a moment. Let's uh, cut to the chase of last night, Ruffy. Aberdeen had the chance, mm -hmm. blew it. Yeah, started off well. A terrific goal. And you would have thought they were on, on for there, but unfortunately... Big centre half, uh, had a wee bit of a nightmare and uh, lost the first goal and then after that the talking points the penalty and uh, unfortunately again for the referee he's got to make a decision and uh, for him he got it wrong. I have to say not in complete defence of him, I thought that the height of Ash Taylor's boot and the way Ross Draper went down I might have given a penalty myself. Yeah, I, I have to say you know He's taken pelters on social media. I think it's been right across it, Willie Collum. Um, I've looked at it three or four times, again and again, looking at the angle of the referee, Darren. I think Draper cons him. Well, looking at the angle of the referee, he could, I could see why he thought it was a penalty, but it's not. And obviously, Derek and Tony are going to be, obviously, raging with the, the, the decision, and I would be myself. Um, the ref's got to be in a better. The ref's got to be in a p better position, and he's got to be a hundred percent because I think he's. When you see it, he's he's probably just guessed that it's a that it's a penalty. So you've got to be a hundred percent when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, overall, uh, I mean, it can set you back. Uh, I mean, you mentioned yeah. Ash Taylor's uh, mistake, which allowed Ian Vigas to get the equaliser anyway, Ruffy, which mm -hmm. is a blow that they just have to take on the chin. But it was at a, a critical moment where I think that penalty just lifted Inverness again and they already have a good record against Aberdeen. Yeah, again, you know, Aberdeen in a situation now, the pressure's on, the pressure's on to keep a hold uh, on to Celtic. Every game is vital now, the players know that the performance levels have to be up there all the time and that would set them back, that, that gives you added pressure with the, the penalty getting in and going, going behind, it just means you've got to dig in a wee bit harder, but I thought the main man, when we all talk about Rooney and everything, I thought the wee boy Hayes going off just changed the game for me, I think he's a, a really, really influential player for them. Yeah, and let's be fair to the officials, they called that Tramarco one right, um, because that could easily have been a goal that was chalked off. Oh, without a doubt, I mean it was a good decision. And it's not like me to praise <laughs> my linesman or referees, but it was a, a it was a great decision from him. That, that when you see when the the ball leaves the boy's boot, that he is on side, and obviously it's come off the Aberdeen defender's head. So they've got one right in the night. Yeah, should they have had a penalty, Aberdeen? One hundred percent. Yeah, it was a. Well, if you're you're saying um, Draper's is a penalty, Shinny's is definitely a penalty. It's roughly the same because the two, the two feet were high. And they've connected, and he's, he's thought he's connected with Draper, where he's not, and um, Shinny. So they say you get them and you don't get them, but I, I don't, I don't go along with that. Just try and make the big, get, try and get the big decisions right. Yeah, one of the things that we have uh, talked about, and we're going to have to be blunt about it, Ruffy. The one saving grace that we mentioned on this program, time and time again, wasn't so much the superiority <laughs> of Celtic; it would be yeah. the failings of Aberdeen. Yeah, well, I think we've all agreed on that, that uh, Celtic will churn out the results. Uh, I think it's Aberdeen, the pressure's on them to continually win all the time. Darren will tell you when you're in a football team, when players are, are, are experiencing a pressure they've never had to before, sometimes some of them go into a shell, some some of them respond to it. But it's a, it's a horrible thing in, going into every game, knowing that you've got to win every one you know, to hold on to Celtic. Yeah, uh, and that in itself, that pressure, uh, uh, Celtic, some Celtic players have been over the course before, which is invaluable. Um, you're probably better placed than more players, Darren, to talk about the mentality of actually when the pressure is on and you're trying to get across the line and win the title as you did with Celtic. Of course it is. That's, that's, that's when, it, when the trophies are handed out at the later stages of the season. Early on, yeah, we can maybe lose that game, but now... You can't you can't lose games, and I think teams going against Celtic, worry or Celtic are coming up, 
and I'm not being disrespectful to Aberdeen because what they've done is incredible, but they're not thinking like that with Aberdeen. Maybe Inverness, Celtic going up to Inverness are, are up for it more against Celtic, but they know that Griffiths is getting a chance. They're, they're going to score and they've got players there that can threaten. Um, but I will I totally agree with Ruffy there. Johnny Hayes, I mean, the, the, I think he's getting a scanty on his hamstring. He's a huge player for them. I think he's been unbelievable. He's been one of the best players of the season and one of the best buys Aberdeen have had. I think he's outstanding. Here's the pivotal <coughs> uh, moment in the season. For me, I'm looking at him thinking, perfect chance to really crank it up. This, I think, is a blip too much, Ruffy. What's your take on Aberdeen's chances now? Yeah, I think uh, I think Derek will regroup. You know, and as long as there's points in there in the bag, I keep talking about the relegation zone with Dundee United. I, I think if Aberdeen can hold on to Celtic, you know, at the split, I keep talking about the split. There's 15 points in that split, and unless Celtic go on a fantastic run, I still think that Hearts are capable of taking points off them. Aberdeen are quite capable. I think the teams at the top are all capable, but you've got to be a, a specific distance. <laughs> come on, no, I, come I, on, I think just if give us the hold, answer. If they can hold on to four points, four mm. points, you, you, you've got a chance. I, I said Celtic will win the league, but I think we all want to make it exciting. We want the split to come and we want something still to be played for. So they've blown it, but they haven't blown it at this point. No, I don't think they've blown it yet. No. Yeah. It's a blow, <laughs> not a blown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew you were going to get there in the end. Um, I, if anything, Dan, I think most of the neutrals, if there is or if there are uh, you know, fans out there of football who are neutrals in this country, they were willing Aberdeen to try and keep it going. Of course, uh, without a doubt, um, apart from the teams they're playing against because they want to get the three points. But, with it, but you would have said they won the first eight games and you would have said they lost the next five, they've blown it because Celtic would have just ran away with it then. Yeah. But they've slipped up. So who's to say Celtic's not going to slip up? I agree with Ruffy. At the end of the day, I think Celtic will win the league. But yes, I think they can push them all the way. Derek will get into them just saying, right, it's gone now. We're still only could be six points behind. They're three points behind their game in hand. But it's, there's still a lot of points to play for, as Derek said. So I don't think his players will be too down about it. Yes, they wanted to draw, draw level in points. But what they've achieved this season, I'm sure they'll be delighted with them. Yeah, well, um, if uh, Aberdeen's <coughs> expectations are still uh, in the lofty position of trying to win the league, Celtic have uh, ambitions of winning the league and, of course, uh, being involved in the Champions League, which over the last uh, week or so has certainly been called into question with the words of Karl Heinz Rummenigge on plans for the elite to break away from the Champions League. Um, Scott Brown was out and about yesterday uh, promoting the Homeless World Cup uh, and he certainly uh, emphasised the point that Champions League football is vital to Celtic. It's whatever happens to be fair, it's not for me to, do, to talk about but uh, if, if it's to be, it's to be, if it's not. We'd be devastated, but hopefully it's not. Uh, we get that filled with the stadium and the fans behind us. And it's a hard place to be if you ask some of the best players in the world. And they've also mentioned that as well, so uh, it'd be a hard one to take. Yeah, Scott Brown highlighting the fact that even Lionel Messi has mentioned the, the uh, Champions League nights at Celtic Park. Mm -hmm. Listen, Celtic, Aberdeen, Rangers when they come back, um, all these clubs want the avenue of European football and the ultimate uh, European mm -hmm. competition, which is the Champions League. Karl Heinz Rummenigge has certainly opened up a, uh, you know, a mm -hmm. can of worms here, and there's a real backlash. Yeah, and, and Scott's right. You know, Celtic use the Champions League uh, to get better players, uh, to attract better players, and if that was taken away for them, you know, you would see the, the really good players going somewhere else. You know, the thought of coming and playing at Parkhead in a Champions League night. Uh, is something that they use when they're out there to get players in to come to Parkhead. People have experienced it being there. Pff, they'd be signing on the dotted line as soon as they walk through the stadium. My initial worry on this, Dan, is sometimes when you get a figurehead like Karl Heinz Rummenigge and they make uh, a statement like this, it scares people. But sometimes they do it to try and get even more leverage, even more uh, financial gain by you know almost putting a gun to people's head. Without a doubt, I mean, there's no doubt he's a, a huge name and people will sit up and listen, but I think Scott's 100% right. It should be champions. Now, it's all about money. You, you finish fourth in the Premiership and they're all opening the champagne and celebrating for for getting them fourth. And that, that's the big, who's going to win the league, but who's going to get in the top four? It's all finance. The champions 
of whatever league you should be in the Champions League because, as they say, it's called the Champions League. Now, to, to turn around and say, no, we're just, we're just going to make it the, the big boys. Well, it's not right. It's not right. And, and Ruffy's right. So, um, Champions League night at Celtic Park are, are special. And you said Messi, but I think Iniesta and Xavi mm. have come out and said the best nights they've, they've had. Yeah, um, well, uh, you can give us your thoughts on that at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter. Darren Jackson remains with us. We're going to talk Hebs and Hearts and the Scottish Cup coming up next. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our bootroom guest, I'm delighted to say, is Darren Jackson. We were actually going to put up uh, one of those uh, little name tags, Ruffy, <laughs> with all the clubs he played for, but uh, I think it's one of those tapes that goes across for an hour and a half we'd need <laughs> when I was thinking about all the clubs. Making news. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's that many clubs uh, that you've played for down through the years, Dan. But of course, uh, I think it's fair to say you're you're one of those players. That, well, let's not ask you. Let's just suggest to Ruff. He's one of those players that if he's not playing for your team, you hate him. If he is playing for your team, you love him. That's a sign of a good player. That's a sign of uh, when you go to a football game and you get fans who dislike a particular person on the other side because he's, he's causing damage. Uh, and that is why they don't like him. Yep, absolutely. We just thought we'd clear that up for you just in case you were <laughs> unsure about it. <laughs> we're going to talk hymns and hearts and get Darren's thoughts in a moment. But there is, of course, um, a vital league game tonight as well because up at Tannadice, Dundee United against Motherwell just uh, is massive for Mixu Patalainen and, of course, for Mark McGee. He was also out chatting yesterday promoting the Homeless World Cup in Glasgow in the summer uh, and he was talking about how big the job is at Fir Park. Even though they run at Christmas and people were saying, well, can you now start to look up the way? And I kept saying no, you know, and I think people thought I was being clever. But I wasn't. I was being honest as how I felt that we were still in, in danger. Um, and that certainly has been borne through by the results we've had recently that's got us back in it. So now we've got to dig ourselves out again. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I've always been in that state of high alert and not got complacent at any stage. Well, I think yet again, Mark is emphasising the mm -hmm. fact that he knew there was a long-term job to do at Motherwell and basically in the short term, he was inheriting a group of players mm -hmm. and maybe been able to tweak the odd one or two. Yeah, but uh, when he went in, uh, as usually happens, is they got a reaction for the players. He got a couple of wins and uh, he would have looked at the pool of players and went, well, maybe it's not as bad as what it is. But uh, obviously, unfortunately, uh, there are two or three games there he was losing goals uh, very, very late on and they're back in. The trouble again, he'll be hoping that the players who, who will use that experience uh, have been down there for a long, long time will be able to use that to their advantage. But he definitely, like everybody else down the bottom of that league, he needs to start winning games. But I don't think he should be judged until he, he gets everything his own way. Yep, uh, I mean, it's a massive job. I don't think the Motherwell fans want to see another playoff situation. Let's have a look at the league table, uh, Darren, uh, just to see their particular predicament. Uh, you know, a win tonight and suddenly you're 15 points clear of Dundee United. Yeah, it's, it's, a win tonight for Motherwell is going to make it really hard for Dundee United. I did say that United would survive. I still believe they'll survive, but if I'm honest, they need to win tonight. And I'm, not, I'm obviously stating the obvious, but that, that's a huge one. They, they need to stick to the team that's that's close to them. Kilmarnock got a fantastic result on Saturday, and as Ruffy said, they got a good reaction when Mark went in there. And it's Mixu didn't get as good a reaction when he first went in, but they're, they're picking up results now. And, and I just believe that Dundee United have really good players in that squad. And uh, I st uh, as I say, I still believe they'll, uh, they'll get out of it. Yeah, uh, and obviously you don't need a reminder of the fact you were there with Simon Donnelly and mm -hmm. Jackie McNamara. Um, do you think even with the players that are left that there's enough quality and belief and mental strength to get out of it? And are you surprised at where your old club is? Of course we're surprised mm -hmm. um, and obviously disappointed. We thought we brought in, well we did bring in good players, it just takes people will be a bit longer than some others. Um, some players come in and just take it like a duck to water and um, go on and other players just take a wee bit of time and we believe we, we signed good players. We didn't go out and think we, we signed bad players. And 
everyone spoke spoken about their mental strength. All the players that they were there that we had took us to three semi finals and two finals and um six in the in the top six every season we were there, so they had mental strength to take us there. So I still believe that they do have mental strength. Yes, people have talk, spoken about sorry, about do they have leaders? They they don't really have leaders because the experienced ones, Pates, Ranks, Sean Dillon, they're no real big shouters. Well, Pates is probably the, the most. But we didn't have leaders then. We just had, we had a good team, we had good players, and I, I, I genuinely believe they still got good players. And just on that point, did it hurt when the criticism came your way, Simon's and Jackie's, with the players uh, that had gone and obviously, you know, what seemingly was left behind because, you know, I, I look at Blair Spittle now and I think to myself, well, you brought him in and he looks as if he's the next big thing. Of course he has players, an outstanding talent. And there is a lot of good players there. And as I said, everyone's got an, a, an entitled to their opinion, especially if, you, if you're at the club and um, they say that um, we, didn't, we didn't recruit well. Now, we could have... Looking in hindsight, there was players that we we thought about that we could have gone for, but we thought we recruited well because you know you're not going to go out and sign bad players and think well we'll just we'll just bring him for for the sake of it. Like um, Rodney Snyder was exceptional. What I mean, what a talent he was, and he just he, he found it hard to settle. I mean, we're not to know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we had to be truthful. We had John McGinn there. That there was a chance that we were going to take John McGinn, but we took Rodney. Now, if it had gone the other way, we might have had John McGinn. And so, we, we, we signed good players. There's, there's no doubt ab about it. Um, Darko Bidal, exceptional talent. It's just, it's just not happened. Um, but as I say, I still think they've got enough talent there. Um, to get out of it. Yeah, don't worry, you're not alone in the studio <laughs> thinking Dundee United can get out of it. Ruffy is backing you. <laughs> um, but uh, sadly for me, uh, I think United are gone. It's going to take something extra special. I can't see it happening. Uh, the playoff place is, is where I think the greatest uh, intrigue <coughs> will lie as we get to April and, and ultimately May. Um, you might disagree with us at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy as well and you can get on to PeterandRuffy.com and give us your view on uh, who you think is getting relegated, who you think is going to finish in the playoff place as well. Uh, to the cup matches, um, well, <laughs> it's a tough one for you to answer but sooner or later like Ruffy you're going to have to tell <laughs> us who's going to win this game and remember there's a repeat later on at night when you can look <laughs> mightily stupid. <laughs> um, I am going to sit in the fence, Peter. I think it's too close to call. Yeah. And I said that in the first game. Yes, I thought Hearts were slight favourites in the first game because they're third in the league. They're going exceptionally well. They're at home. They've got the majority of the crowd. But Hibs have beaten three Premiership teams this year and drawn with Hearts. So you're going to Easter Road. Can you make Hibs favourite because they've got the bigger crowd? They're at home. Probably not. So I think it's that even. I honestly believe, and people say, well, you are just sitting on the fence. But I think it's too hard to call. I don't think the two teams will change the style, the way they play. Um, I think Robbie's got a, a, a way he plays in home or away, unless you're maybe going to Celtic Park or going to Aberdeen, it might be different. But I think alan has got a way he plays that even going to Ibrox, he's got young kids there and obviously with mixed with experience that he goes to try and play. He goes to try and win every game. <clears throat> I think that'll be it tonight and I think I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be a fantastic game. I thought the first game, physically, Hearts are a lot bigger and stronger than Hibs. And I thought they'll come out and they'll really have a go at them and try and bully them, which I was at the Aberdeen game and they did to Aberdeen in the previous round. And I thought they'll come out and they didn't. Hibs came out really well and I thought for the first 10, 15 minutes, Hibs were very good. And then Hearts got back into it. Patterson started getting a lot of space down the right. And obviously the two, the two goals have come from Patterson. Two wonderful goals. But Hibs needed to try and get the ball into the midfield. And I think that's where the second half, Alan stuck to his, his formation. And he just 
they had to try and get Kevin Thompson on the ball to get played into Stokes, trying to get played into Liam Henderson, Cummings, and I thought they held the ball up better and linked better in the second half, and I think that's how they got back in the game. Yeah, OK. Well, I know the good thing about you going to Edinburgh, um, you'll get pelters from both sets of fans. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rafi, he, I mean, he padded it out more than you <laughs> with saying yeah. nothing in the end. He, he set it up brilliantly, but you're still going for the heavies. Yeah, I'm going for Hibs. Uh, I think it'll be a great game, like Darren says. Uh, I think it'll be really exciting. I think we got a, uh, a shot at it in the first game. It was to and fro, which I liked. You know, both teams trying to win the game. I think both teams have got match winners on their side, and it's whatever match winner comes up with something special. I think it will have to be something special to win this game tonight, and it depends who it is from either side. So yeah. <clears throat> I'm hoping that Cummins and Stokes have got a good game tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we did ask the question on Twitter yesterday, and it's just finished. Um, Hibs fans, what would you prefer, Scottish Cup or promotion? I think it's uh, fairly uh, you know, uncontested, really, 68%. Um, uh, would prefer promotion for the Hibs. Who's going to win Kilmarnock Rangers briefly? I am. I think Rangers will win that tonight. Okay. Yeah, I think the amount of chances Rangers had in the first game, if they can can score half of them, half of the chances they'll win the game. OK, it's been an absolute joy as ever uh, to get Darren uh, here and trying to get him to say who's going to win Hibs or Hearts. It's tough enough. Um, you can see Darren tonight at Easter Road. He'll be wearing a dress much like my, <laughs> my dress <laughs> just to stay incognito as we enjoy the game. Certainly looking forward to an Edinburgh derby. If you've never seen one, get along to one. If you can get a ticket these days, they're not to be missed. Thanks to Darren Jackson from Ruffy and myself. Join us tomorrow at 7 if you can. Good night.